peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Uh, just wanted to make a quick prayer request video for the month of January, February, March. We're in March. Uh, still got April and part of May to get through for the winter time. Um, but uh, I just wanted to keep putting these videos out to encourage you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that prayer, your prayer life is very important. And we're going to continue doing this. And it might seem like I'm quoting the same scriptures all the time when we do these videos. But remember, brothers and sisters of Christ, God's word says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. According to thy word. Alright. The King James Bible. This is my big Bible. <laughs> Alright. King James Bible for English speaking people. This we gotta hide in our heart, brother says Christ, and that means going over verses over and 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 over. Why? Because we have to hide in our heart. What happens when you stop hiding God's word in your heart? The flesh tries to kick it out, and it can be successful. There's verses I went through and said, I forgot about that. I haven't read that verse in a long time, and I've forgotten about that verse. When I was uh, newly saved, trying to learn verses. Uh, what made it very difficult to, to really hide God's word in my heart was my flesh was getting in the way more than it does now. It still gets in the way sometimes, but it got in the way more than it does now. Right? So that's why we go over these verses. So in the King James Bibles, in your King James Bibles, if you have them, uh, we, we're just going to go through them again. Uh, you can open your Bibles, but we're just going to make a short video, quick video. But 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We're supposed to have a strong prayer life. When does your prayer life start? At sal before salvation. That's when your prayer life starts. Before salvation. When you throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. Remember what King David said. If I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. When does God hear the prayer of a sinner? At Calvary. When you throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. And you repented, you believed, you confess. this is where prayer comes in, you confess both in prayer to God, and you ask God to save you. Some of you have testimonies where you beg God to save you. I don't deserve it, Lord. I deserve to go to hell, Lord. Please don't let me go to hell. Please save me. That's when your prayer life starts, brother says Christ. And it doesn't start, start there, and it doesn't end there. You need to have a strong prayer life. Pray without ceasing. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You need, a, you need something in your life? Ask God. Uh, just the other day, I was wanting to go uh, make my trip to, um, uh, what is it, Gold Beach. There's a, a, a pizza shop there that does the wood stove pizzas. And then there's the... Uh, uh, what is it, the library? There's a bookstore, a used bookstore. Not a library, but a used bookstore. So 
where I find some of my Bibles. I found all of these at the used bookstore. Some of the other Bibles that I show, uh, some of the books that we've gone through, uh, like the Catechism for Protestants. There's a Catechism for Protestants. We went through it. It's just Catholic. It's just completely Catholic. I wanted to go down there, but it was kind of sprinkling, and the weather didn't look too good. And I was like, Lord, should I go tomorrow? Should I make plans to go tomorrow? Oh, Lord, it doesn't look too good outside. We've been having hail left and right, off and on, snow off and on, and it'd get warm during the day where it melts everything, and then uh, the wind picks up, gets very windy, uh, and rain, okay? And I was like, well, we could, I could just go and sit there, but I like getting the pizza to go, and I like sitting there, there's a place where you can sit and you can watch the fishermen fish, there's, a, there's an inlet to the Rogue River in Gold Beach, where you can see, I can sit there and watch the seals fish. The seals come into that in, inlet to the river, and they go after trout, um, steelhead, and salmon. And I get to sit there and watch them with their heads popping up and popping down. I'll, list, I'll put in uh, Alexander Scorvey and I'll listen to the Bible. I'll have some pizza while I'm sitting in the truck. And I'm watching. And then we head over to the beach to let the dogs walk for about 20, 30 minutes. And then I'll hit the book, used bookstore on the way home. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I want to, I want to go, but I'm just looking outside and it's just the hail, the, the ice. I also like taking the back road. Okay, we have a video on here called Taking the Back Road, The Road Less Traveled By, I think is what it was. And we did a hymn to it and uh, we were showing the back road. I tried to hold the camera there the whole way I'm driving, so it's all, um, it wasn't done the best quality. But it's the back road. There's a back road here that goes almost all the way through the mountainside. Um, heading up to Pistol River, you cut across to the main highway and you, fly, and you go up the rest of the way to Gold Beach. But it's this back road that I live off of and in the mountainside. And you take it Carpenter Road all the way up to Pistol River and it's so beautiful to look at the mountains on one side and you see the ocean at a distance like you're up on top of the mountains looking way down to the ocean on one side and it just trades off. You get to see the, the valley on the right side and all the mountains on this side. It's a beautiful trip. I like to take my time. I, that road, I think you can go 55 on it if you wanted to, but it's an old road. And some places it goes to rock from asphalt. I just go 20. And when there's someone that gets behind me, I pull over and let them pass. And I just take my time. I talk to the Lord. And I watch and I look at the beauty. There's a couple places out there the Lord blessed me with. I'll go picnicking out there. Pull the truck over to a spot, set there. Put the tailgate down, set up some chairs, use the tailgate as like a table, and I'll look at the beauty that God has out there, and I'll talk with the Lord. Listen to music and talk with the Lord for an hour or two. Uh, listen to Alexander Scorby or a Bible study. Pause it and talk with the Lord in between. Uh, but brothers, this is Christ. We need to have a strong prayer life, and when you need... The whole point is, is I kept praying and praying and praying about that, and then God finally said, you know what, don't worry about it right now. Don't worry about that. I was like, okay. And the very next day, hardcore hail came down and snow it snowed in the morning. And then as the temperature got got warmer, it stopped snowing. But when the wind got picked up, it just turned the rain into hail. And it started hailing good, good size. I'm glad we don't get like golf ball sizes, but we get more like pea sizes of hail. Pea. The size of peas. Um, but I was like, okay, this was, wouldn't have been a good day to go. But I talked with the Lord about it. You know, when you've got requests, Lord, what should I do financially? What should I do physically? Uh, we'll get into uh, Brother in Christ's testimony in another video. Um, but he's always saying, Lord, what, what do you think I should do? You know, what do you, I always, it's, it's like the Holy Spirit bearing witness with my spirit. Because it's like, I do the same thing. I, I'm like, Lord, what is thy will? Thy will be done. Your will be done. This is what I'd like to get done today. Your will be done. And there's two things that will get in the way of you doing something. You and the will of God. Your flesh and the will of God. There's times where God's like, you could have done it, but your flesh got in the way. You got lazy, you got tired, you got distracted. You could have still done it. It was God. So don't blame God. But there's times where you can't get something done and God's like, I just don't want that done today. That's, that's not what I want for you today. I didn't, I didn't want you making the trip to Gold Beach. I, I, okay, Lord. Okay. That's what I wanted. But I do that every day. Like, Lord, is it, if it be your will, here's the three main things I'd like to get done today. Today I'd like to get the prayer request video out 
for the brethren. I have a um, testimony video to get out to the brethren uh, of a brother's testimony. I've got some studies that I'm working on uh, to get them out in the next few days. And uh, just to really encourage the brethren, uh, there's, uh, I'm stuck indoors. We've got this place pretty much locked down, organized, cleaned. And dusting is the biggest thing I do now. It's like, okay, maybe we can dust a room every day. Um, but I'm stuck inside. I want to go outside. There's work I want to do outside, but I can't do nothing until we get through this winter and we get to springtime and I can really go hardcore working on the property. Um, but make sure that be careful of nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Lord, I didn't get to do this today. Praise God. That's another thing. Praise God. With thanksgiving. Lord, I wanted this. Whether you get it or not, are you giving God thanks? Are you praising God? Through the good and through the bad, are you praising God? With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Are you talking to God and asking God? I mean, we've done studies on it, but remember, uh, in the King James Bible, you go back to the Old Testament, you remember uh, Joshua. He was deceived by those people that he was supposed to wipe out and chase off the, the promised land. He was deceived. Why? Because he didn't seek God's wisdom, God's advice. A lot of times in the Bible, you go to the Old Testament, when you see men trip, good men of God, when they trip and they fall, it's because they decided to go it alone. They didn't seek the advice of the Lord. I'm warning you, brothers and sisters, in these last days, you don't want to be going it alone. You want to be seeking the advice of the Lord. Amen. James 1.5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. This book right here, I don't understand everything, but I pray for understanding. There's things in the Bible that this over here says one thing, this over here says another. I believe it to be God's perfect written word. It's not a contradiction. God just hasn't revealed it to me yet. But what do I do? I pray and ask God for wisdom. Lord, open the scriptures. And nine out of ten times he does, and that tenth time he didn't, he will eventually. It's just he's doing it in his time. Okay, in his time. Not my time, his time. Remember, thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. If it be your will, Lord, let me get this done today. If it be your will, Lord, open this to me. I'm having a problem with this and trying to connect this to that. Oh, bro, there's brethren that are fighting over certain things in the Bible. Okay, uh, Lord, I'm coming to you. They're all fighting. I've heard his side. I've heard that person's side. I've heard that person's side. Lord, I'm coming to you. And let's do a Bible study, you and me, Lord. One-on-one, -on -one, me and you, Lord. Open the scriptures to me. Help me to see what's truth and what's error. Okay. Are you praying for that? That should be an everyday prayer, brother says Christ. Everyday prayer. John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldst be should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. Every day you should be praying for that God continues to hide God's that you have that God helps you hide his word in your heart and live it. Open the scriptures to you. And you should be praying for the brethren. Your life, your walk with the Lord, and the brethren's walk with the Lord. Every day we desperately need it, brother says Christ. I said it time and time again. I desperately need prayer. I am not perfect. I struggle with the flesh. I can get distracted by this world just like any other man that's famous and has 40 or 50,000 subscribers on YouTube or these men behind the battle buildings. I'm not perfect. They like to pretend like they're perfect. I'm not perfect. I get distracted. I need prayer, brothers of Christ, to stay focused. That walk that I have with the Lord, my prayer life, my Bible reading life, my Bible studying life, my Bible living the Word of God life. I need prayer, brothers, and I pray for you. Okay. Over here, I'm not going to go through all these scriptures I had over here, but over here, the two biggest prayer requests that I keep bringing up a lot in these last days is one is pray for the brethren in the falling away that they don't take their eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. And there's verse after verse where the biggest one here is Psalms 12.1 where it says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fall or fail from among the children of men. We're seeing a lot of people fall away through simple things like sins that they don't want to let go of. 
Distractions by the world, worldliness, get so distracted by what's going on in the world that their, re their reaction, how they're living their life is based off of what the world is dir directing them and not what the Word of God is directing them. They're getting distracted. And we're seeing brethren fall away. We're seeing brethren attack each other. Severely attack each other. Personally. Not disagreements where we butt heads, brothers of Christ. Sometimes we butt heads. We do. Okay. But I'm talking about the brethren having a lot of hate in their heart towards each other. Having a lot of bitterness in their heart towards each other. Having a lot of pride in their heart. To the point where the heart gets hardened. Kicking brethren to the curb like they're nothing. We're not, we're not seeing much love for the brethren these days. Among the body of Christ. It's like every man for himself. We're in the last days. It's, it's like the falling away. Brings me to the second prayer request. The main one is helping. And I mean, I've got a lot of verses here that talk about, you know, praying for the brethren. But that's a big one right there. In these last days, the godly man seems to ceaseth. People are doing things their way, which is the flesh's way, the world's way. They're not doing things God's way. We need to pray for them. I need prayer that I don't become like that. I could easily become like that if I start giving into the flesh too much, start getting distracted by the world too much. Like I said, brothers of Christ, I am a saved sinner. There's times where I do fail because of my flesh, giving into the flesh. There's times I do get distracted by giving into the world. I'm not perfect, but I don't want to be. I don't want to be part of the falling away. Okay. The second prayer request is helping the brethren out in hard times. People are so quick and easy to throw money at so-called battle buildings and full-time ministries on YouTube and Rumble and BitChute and whatever, and they're just throwing money at some guy that's just taking it and living up on it. When's the last time you helped out a brother in Christ that needed food, clothing, a roof over their head, had, had a hard time paying bills? When's the last time you, you've helped a brother or sister in Christ out that had no connection? We're all part of the ministry of reconciliation. We're all ambassadors for Jesus Christ. But I'm talking about they're not saying, give me money because I'm a full-time ministry. Just a brother or sister in Christ that's trying to make it day by day, living for the Lord and being a light to this dark world. When's the last time you've helped one of them out? Today it's all just throw money at the Bible buildings and throw money at so-called full-time ministries on YouTube, like video ministries, and you know, you'll get all these rewards and everything. But what happened to helping brothers and sisters in Christ out? That seems to have gone whew, disappeared. Check yourself. Check yourself, brothers and Christ. 2 Corinthians 8:11. For this one, now therefore performing the, the doing of it, that as there are, as there was a readiness to to will, so there may be a performance also out of that, out of that which he have. Talk about processions. That if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to he hath not. For I mean not to other, I mean not that other men be eased and ye burden, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply to their want. We're supposed to help one another. If I have an abundance, I'm supposed to take my abundance and share it with the brethren that are lacking. Remember the verse that talks about those that had an, ab uh, had an abundance, had nothing left over? Those that were, uh, that had less, had no, had no lack? In other words, you even everything out. God blesses me with giving me an abundance. I share it with brethren that are hurting and barely getting by or not being able to get by at all. That's what true donations are for. That's what the whole point of donations is. I got in a hurry. That was just spam. Having a landline, you get nothing but spam. Please forgive that intrusion. I forgot to unplug. But, Brothers Christ, it says there, but 
be a supply for their want, that their abundance may abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equal equality. As is written, he that gathered much had nothing over. There's what it is. He that gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God which puts the same earnest care in the hearts of Titus for you. And 2 Corinthians 9-7 says, Every man accordeth that he is purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful heart. They're not supposed to be guilt-tripping you, bullying you, bribing you, fear-mongering you. We watch out for those things. There used to be three, but someone had to throw in fear-mongering. Yeah, that could be used to try to get money out of you. It's supposed to be of a cheerful heart. And those mainly, those donations that, that's being collected is not for full-time ministries and men in full-time ministries. It's for the body of Christ as a whole. Does it include men in ministry? Yes. But it's for the body of Christ as a whole. That's been perverted today. Show me one battle building that does that. No, we gotta, we got to keep this building up. We've got salaries we got to pay. It's a business. Show me an online ministry that claims to be, like video ministries, it's full-time ministries that does that. They don't. They've got bills that they've got to pay, and it's all about them, you know, it's their salary. It's, they've earned it. Because they always grab that verse about, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. It's talking about food and raiment. Not living your dream life. Food and raiment. I remember my grandfather in Oklahoma, he's passed away now, but in Oklahoma, uh, he was a, a deacon, I think a deacon or an ordained elder. I think he was a deacon in these Babel buildings in Oklahoma. They have these big, huge ba Babel buildings, uh, Baptist Babel buildings. And he was on the board. And uh, one of the pastors there, they had a house, a property and a house, a roof that the church owned. And anytime they had a pastor come through that was going to be one of their pastors, that's where they would open the doors and that's where the pastor would stay. Well, the pastor wasn't satisfied with that. pastor wanted them to sign over the house to him so it was his. And he said, no, this, this building belongs to the church and it's for whoever's preaching. You got a salary, save up your money, you preach here for 20 years, you'll save up money, you can go buy your own house somewhere. But this building, it belongs to the people of the church, the Babel building, and uh, that's not going to happen. Well, they laughed, and he called my grandfather a jerk, and he they they bared false witness, backbiting wit witnessing. Basically, they got him fired as a deacon, so that he could have that house. This whole push in these Babel buildings, and you can see online too with so-called online ministries. It's like they're treating it like it's a salary. That's not what donations are for. I'm sorry to go off on a little bit of a tangent, brothers and Christ. But donations, the elders, the ordained elders, the ones that are least esteemed among the church, not bishops, not deacons, the elders collected the money. And the elders distributed the money as, it had, as, they, as they have need. There was one time that Paul, in the scriptures, Paul came and grabbed the money. It wasn't for Paul. He was, it was the elders said, okay, this portion of the money we're setting to the side for a group of Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. Back then it was a spoken word, but, you know, church of, of God, saints, saved sinners, body of Christ, over in this area. And since, Paul, you're heading that way, could you take this with you? And Paul stopped by on the first day of the week just to grab those uh, donations, and he went back to traveling. There was no preaching on the first day of the week that time. It was just grabbing the money, taking it to those uh, brethren that had need of it. It wasn't for Paul. It wasn't for a battle building. It wasn't for men in ministry, full-time ministry. And you say, you're kind of kicking that. I'm not against you, brother, says Christ, donating to men in ministry. My question to you is, when's the last time you've helped a brother or sister in Christ out? And I know a lot of you guys, it's going to prick your heart like it did mine. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get angry with me and try to lash out at me. I've seen it in the comment section. When I did that study, Brother Says Christ, on um, have you uh, encouraged a brother in Christ, exhorted a brother in Christ lately? 
I had someone lash out at me in the comment section. I was going to repeat it, but the brethren took it down. Must have been having a bad day. But your first thought is going to be to lash out at me. Because the conviction in your heart. When's the last time you helped a brother in Christ? So how come, when's the last time you donated, if it's money, uh, physical things like food, clothing, your time, to a brother and sister in Christ to help them out? You keep jumping up and down to donate your time to watch videos like this, on this ministry. But I'm telling you, that's good. Watch good Bible study videos. But when's the last time you took some time out to, uh, to sacrifice some of your time to help out a brother and sister Christ? Fellowship. We desperately need prayer for this. Especially in these last days. When brethren are going through hard times, that's when the world really tries to get their hooks in you and start pulling you away. When you're going through hard times. We're supposed to be there for one another in hard times. Desperately need to be praying to keep them from evil. That the hard times don't get them to backpedal. Don't get them to fall. Stumble and fall. We're supposed to be there for one another. In prayer, physically helping, uh, financially helping. We're supposed to be there for one another. And these last days, like I said, it's just this big push among the Bible believe, professing Bible-believing uh, Christians... Brothers and sisters in Christ, we seem to just we love we say we love the brethren, but in, in deed, remember words and deed. In words, we love everybody, we love one another, you know, we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. But in deed, it's every man for himself. There's a lot of hate and bitterness going on among the body of Christ. So your words and your deeds aren't lining up. We definitely need to pray this for this, brothers of Christ. The body of Christ needs prayer. I need prayer. Pray for me as much as you're praying for yourself, brother says Christ. I'm praying for you. Romans 1 9, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul's attitude. I'm always making mention of you in my prayers. I'm praying for you, brother. I will always be praying for you. I pray that God helps you with your bills. I pray that God helps you with food and raiment. I pray God helps you with your walk with the Lord, overcoming that sin in your life that you're struggling with. I'm praying for you, brother. What happened to that in these last days? Every man fend for yourself. Romans 10.1 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. I always throw that one in there. Brothers says Christ, are you praying for, for Israel, for the Jewish people, that whatever happens, that, uh, as we can get some of them saved today before the catching away of the body of Christ and the time of Jacob's trouble happens? Are you, do you have your eyes on, on the catching away of the body of Christ? There's a lot of wickedness going on there. I watch videos of a guy walking around Jerusalem. There's three quarters over there. There's a Muslim quarter. There's a Jewish quarter. And there's a Catholic quarter. They call it a Christian quarter. It's a Catholic quarter. Catholicism. Okay. Paganism. Paganism. Jews that, are, that have fallen away from doing things God's way. They're not, they're not right in God's eyes. They desperately need prayer. They're surrounded. They desperately need prayer. My prayer is that God... Gives them every opportunity and that they might get saved. That's what Paul was. They might be saved. Lord, uh, I'm, adapt I'm adopted in, the Bible says. We're grafted in. We're adopted in to the Jewish people. This is the time of the Gentiles. We're adopted in. But God has not done away with his people. Blindness is part has happened to Israel. God will go back to dealing with Israel full force in the time of Jacob's trouble after the body of Christ is gone. But I still pray for them. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we desperately need to be praying for the brethren today. Okay. And um, I, I can't force brethren. I cannot force you to do what's right by God's word, just as you can't force me. Uh, you know, I, I take correction. Please correct me when I'm wrong. Uh, please help me if you see me doing something wrong. I've had a brother correct me a couple times in the last few months. I uh, Not a few months. It's actually the last couple of weeks. Uh, with some of my thumbnails that I put up in some of the videos. 
Um, and I thank the brethren for that. But the point I'm trying to get to here is, is the comment section is pretty quiet. The emails, the, the email to the ministry, the prayer and testimonies, 2018 I think it is, but I'll put it in the description again. But the email is very quiet when it comes to prayer requests and testimonies. In these last days, you'd think that the prayer requests would be through the roof. Should be. I need prayer for my health. I need prayer that uh, might keep my flesh down. I need prayer that this, sometimes I pray that this house just stays standing because it's, it's, on, it's on a hillside. There's things about this house that's so old it's falling apart that I'm praying, Lord, that He helps me save up money to fix things. I finally, I mean, I had holes, this place had holes in the wall, cracks in the wall that looked pretty bad, and it was like that for like three, four years. Finally gotten fixed. Praise God. To God be the glory. There's other things on the house that's slowly getting fixed. I had a beam replaced a couple of years ago. When I wanted to fix the inside of the house, something outside I had beams on the outside that were rotting. Oh, you need to get these replaced. Okay. Thank you, Lord. They got them done. Praise God. There's a corner of the house over here, brother, says Christ. I'm pointing, but you wouldn't understand. But over here, uh, that the foundation is crumbling. The cement foundation is crumbling. And I need that all reinforced and fixed. Um, so uh, there's just things that I like to get done around the house. Um, but mainly, like I said, all this physical stuff means nothing compared to the spiritual. The prayer that I talked about, the not the falling away. Praying for one another that we stay, that this stays becoming our final authority. We don't start getting so prideful and puffed up that we start adding to and subtracting from the Word of God so we can have what we want, live how we want, believe what we want. That we don't become part of the falling away. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please, please make sure that prayer, your prayer life is strong and that you're praying for one another. And before we end this segment, uh, if you saw the intro, I have a prayer wall. So I have a request for the brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't have to. And, and I think I made this request before. It didn't happen, but I'll make the request again. Brothers and sisters in Christ that support this ministry, which is Paul's... I'm a, I'm a disciple, okay, of Christ, but I'm, a, I'm part of Paul's ministry, and Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, this is God's ministry that support me in ministry, in God's ministry, um, I'd like to get some pictures. I mean, I've got letters. You saw the board. i got letters galore and only one picture. And I, at first, I wanted that board not to be a letter board because I can keep the letters in folders and everything. i got a filing cabinet over there. But I wanted it to be a picture board where I can have pictures and names of brethren that, that, that email me, that have prayer requests, that have testimonies that they share with me, that, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I wanted pictures to put on that wall when I walk by, because that's a wall I walk by all the time. When I walk by, I stop and look at that wall, and I start talking to the Lord about the brethren. Now I have to look at who this letter's from, who that letter's from, and everything, which is okay. I can continue doing it that way. But my request is, if, if you want to, you can email me a picture, and I'll even, because the one picture I have up there is just printed out of the printer. It's not an actual photo. It's just a picture that's printed out of the, the computer. I'll print off the computer. You have, we have a P.O. box for this ministry. You can email this ministry a letter and, and a photo. And I wanted a prayer wall while I could say, okay, there's this brother and sister in Christ and their family to pray for, because the picture I have up there is a brother and sister in Christ and his four kids. I think he's got four kids. I've, um, but I just I wanted pictures so I could look at the pictures, you know, and say, okay, I'm praying. I know that brother in Christ. I know that sister in Christ. I remember her prayer request, and I, it helps remind me to pray for the brethren and talk to the Lord about the brethren. Like I said, it's just that's that's a want. It's not a need. It's a want. It's, this request is not a need. It's not dire. It's not end of the world. How dare you not do this type of request? You know, this is what you need to follow. Okay. It's just a request. It's a want, brothers and sisters of Christ. So, I want to throw that in there. Make sure you're praying for each other. Make sure you're being there for one another. But prayer life, prayer life, prayer life is so important, brothers and sisters of Christ. And the comment section, please, please, please. I know you might upset some uh, respecter of persons that you're following. But please, put a prayer request in the comment section. Okay. 
uh, email me some prayer requests. Okay, uh, like I said, if you can't email me uh, a picture of you, that's uh, maybe I need to be specific. I don't want just any picture. A picture of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to put up on the board. Okay, so I, like I said, I want the board full of pictures of people that I pray that help remind me pray for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. You know, what I'm saying it's just a want. It's not a need. But what is a need is that we desperately need to be praying, brothers and Christ. Talking to the Lord and praying for one another. Okay? Pr praying for your own walk with the Lord and praying for the walk of the brethren with the Lord. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I'm praying for you, brothers and Christ. Please be praying for me.